After about 40 hours of playing Borderlands 3 with the same character, I finally completed it, with only 4 or 5 side quests to go. I played it completely on Linux, and I thought I'd give my review of the game itself, as well as how it runs on Linux. I know I'm late, but a review is always better with some real time spent with the game, and a little bit of hindsight as well. The Machine this review can't be complete without a few specs, so here is the machine I used to play Borderlands 3. I use my trusty and relatively beefy desktop PC, running Manjaro GNOME with all updates installed as of the 27th of September. It rocks a Ryzen 5 2600 CPU and an RTX 2060 using the latest stable NVIDIA proprietary drivers available. It has 16GB of RAM and the OS runs from an M.2 SSD. The game itself was installed on a 7200 RPM hard drive disk for this space reasons. This machine usually performs very well at 1440p, which is the resolution I used to play Borderlands 3. How good is the story? Borderlands 3 starts off slow. You begin on Pandora, the titular planet of the series, as a new Crimson Raider recruit, which are the guys that are supposed to protect Pandora from evil corporations and bandits. You're greeted with everyone's most hated robot, Claptrap. This time around though, you don't start with a bunch of stupid errands for a few hours. You get thrown directly in the action with your first boss fight, a very simple one, coming in after 15 minutes or so. This trend continues throughout the whole story, which should take about 15 to 20 hours to complete if you skip all the side missions and the mini objectives. Borderlands 3 is action packed, throwing you into fight after fight with only a few exploration phases, which also contain enemies but so weak it won't feel like you're fighting, to break up the pace. The tale Borderlands 3 tells is pretty classic, and the culmination of the various story arcs that Borderlands 1 and 2 started. All bandits on Pandora have now been united by the Calypso Twins, some kind of murder streamer duo who turned every deranged individual, which is almost everyone, into their followers, agglomerated in a cult called the Children of the Vault, or COV for short. The ultimate goal of the Twins is to use this free army to open the Great Vault to turn themselves into gods. The game leans lightly on the streamer side of the villains, which doesn't really add anything to the story, but gives them a certain personality. They will frequently pester you with short communications, and the game world will display short video clips of the various humiliations they will inflict on your team. These villains are good ones, but they never reach the menacing aloofness of a certain handsome Jack, and while they are credible and sometimes infuriating, you never really feel threatened by them, something that is reinforced by the easy ride through your first playthrough. The main story was too easy for me, maybe because I completed all the side quests and because the missions have a fixed level attributed to them, which doesn't scale with yours. It doesn't detract from the experience, and it does make you feel like a badass mercenary mowing down hordes of the exotic wildlife and deranged psychos that populate the various planets you'll explore. Speaking of planets, Borderlands 3 lets you explore outside of Pandora. It will bring you on a variety of different locations, from parched deserts to peaceful mountain ranges, lush jungles and sprawling metropolises, to finish on a weird planet covered with alien ruins. Each locale has its own cast of characters, with almost everyone returning from Borderlands 2 and 1, that sometimes feel more like fan service than a crucial part of the story. It's still good to know what happened to these guys, although I would have liked to know the fates of all of Borderlands 2's Vault Hunters. In the end, the story, while pretty basic overall, move from planet to planet to fetch various devices, then gather them all in the same spot to unlock the final boss, still had enough twists and turns to keep me interested until the end, and had a few surprises in stock, some I saw coming from a mile away, and some others that really surprised me. Is the humor still relevant? Not cool, bro. That's something that will depend on you more than the game. The Borderlands humor has always got me smirking more than really laughing, and this time is no different. A few jokes and characters made me genuinely smile, and a few references really hit home for me, but I never really burst out of laughter either. It's still pretty much under the belt, with references to feces, genitals and a few more subtle jokes here and there. It also tries not to take itself too seriously, which it mostly succeeds at. Some attempts at mocking the current world and gaming in general are a bit heavy-handed. <coughs> The humor worked for me just as well as it did in the first two installments. 
If it didn't make you laugh then, it won't work here either. If it put you off, Borderlands 3 will be no different. How is the gameplay? The gameplay or gunplay has been refined a lot. Characters feel more mobile, more active, guns reload faster, enemies have a bit less health, and as such I could run around, shoot everyone and stay mobile, avoiding the cover shooter feeling I had from the second Borderlands. The fact that you can vault over stuff and climb a lot better than before also adds some verticality, which the game likes to remind you about with a few quests and side objectives that had me jumping across ledges and figuring out a way to climb as high as possible. It's a well-used mechanic. But I picked myself up. You still have the Borderlands basic, you gain XP by killing enemies and completing missions, which you can use to level up and unlock skill points. These can be spent in any of the three skill trees each character has, and this time around, they make a difference in how you play your character. The one I picked, Flag the Beastmaster, has a different pet per tree, and can be played as a very offensive, fast-moving DPS, a tank with healing abilities, or even a kind of support character. The other ones also have the same amount of versatility, and since you can respec your character at any time, you can even switch from one role to the next easily. Each skill tree has a separate action skill, and the more you advance in that skill tree, the more modifiers you unlock to tweak it however you like. I could turn my monkey-like pet into a bigger, banana haircut sporting version of itself that would attack my designated target with a rocket launcher instead of trying to club it to death. My critical hit attack could be made more durable at the expense of reduced damage, and there are a ton of possible combinations. In terms of loot, since this is the main appeal of the game, Borderlands 3 is pretty generous with it. It still has a few rarity levels, with white items being common ones, green being uncommon, blue being rare, purple for epic, and orange for legendary. Legendary items are still pretty easy to obtain during the first playthrough, and I had maxed my bank's capacity with legendary guns, shields, and class mods before the end of the main game. The loot you don't need or keep for another character can be stored in Sanctuary, now your main base. It contains a few quests, all the main characters you've encountered, as well as the various devices you'll need to sell your superfluous loot, expand your ammo or backpack storage for regular old dollars this time around, change your skin, head, body, eco device, emotes and others are customizable, or even get your hand on the loot you might have left behind during your various slaughters. Gaze upon my new configuration. You'll even find good old Crazy Arrow, which will let you use your hard-earned Iridium to buy skins for your character or your weapons, or even buy some guns or shields. I'd advise you keep this special currency, since it will find a way better use towards the end of the game, and the skins drop pretty often to keep up with the latest fashion. The menus are still fiddly though, and comparing weapons to know which one might be the best is a chore, as is navigating the map, the quest menu and the inventory. To conclude, I also have played a dozen of hours in multiplayer, and Borderlands 3 really shines there. You have two options when creating your game, cooperation or competition. The first one is the one I'd recommend, since everyone has their own loot, so no mad rush to scoop up any shiny drop, and enemies and quests are leveled so every player can contribute the same amount to the progression. It means you can create a new character and join your friends to beat the end boss, you won't be under leveled and will still be able to enjoy the experience. Competition is the older Borderlands multiplayer, which feels pretty dated to me with its shared loot and level differences. If you plan to play at a different pace than your friends, cooperation is the way to go. All in all, Borderlands 3 has a bunch of tweaks and improvements to the gameplay and is clearly a superior game for it. Does it have enough content? Absolutely. As I said, it took me about 40 hours to beat the last boss and turn in the last quest, and I see have a few side quests to complete. Each map on each planet has its own set of side activities that will reward you with lore, trinkets and experience points, and these are sparse enough that they don't feel like you're trying to grab a hundred bird feathers from the rooftops. Side quests are a bit less abundant than in Borderlands 1 and 2, which is a good thing, since getting to a bounty board to be greeted with five different missions that barely added anything to the story was a bit boring after a while. They all have their own little story and jokes and work well to make you discover each corner of the map. The four Vault Hunters feel different enough that replaying the game with every one of them doesn't seem like a chore to me. There is also the return of the true Vault Hunter mode, a more difficult version of the game, and if you want to farm some loot, you can activate Mayhem mode, which has itself three difficulty levels. It will bring various modifiers to your character and the enemies to make the experience interesting each time, and will increase loot drop rates so you feel rewarded. Once you've completed the main story, you also unlock Guardian ranks, which are the same as badass ranks in Borderlands 2, with the exception that you gain tokens through a separate experience bar. It will allow you to put your tokens in various trees, with big passive modifiers dropping if you concentrate on the same tree with enough tokens. This makes the game highly replayable and long-lasting. 
The fact that you can go anywhere you'd like through the fast travel makes it easy to target a specific boss or area to farm some loot, and your characters can keep evolving after you've maxed out their level. How does it look? Visually, the game is stunning. On screenshots, one might be forgiven for thinking that it doesn't look all that much better than Borderlands 2, but in action, it really does. Textures are amazingly detailed, and the cell shading style makes them shine even more. Character models also are high quality, even though the art style doesn't make them look as impressive as more photorealistic graphics. The effects for fire, electricity, corrosion or acid are beautiful, and the game has some very nice skyboxes as well, in line with what one might find in Destiny. The amount of detail in the environments is simply staggering and sometimes make it look a bit too busy, especially when trying to find an enemy amongst piles of debris, crates, barrels and other junk lying around. Every planet has its own distinctive style, and all are rendered pretty well, but the most amazing part of Borderlands 3 is the guns. All these gun models are simply nuts. Every gun you'll find will have its nicely animated parts, from the reload animation to firing or melee attacking with it. They all scream attention to detail. With the various gun skins you can find, you can add even more detail or crazy patterns to them, and seeing one of your trinkets dangling from the grip of your massive pistol with realistic physics is always nice. The various volumetric lightning effects and the draw distance are handled well, with very little blur or texture distortion, and everything feels nice and coherent. Borderlands 3 is a vast improvement over the second one, and looks how a modern game should. How does it run? Well, it will depend on your machine, obviously. I've read people saying that it's badly optimized, but I don't feel like this is an accurate representation of my experience. On my machine at 1440p, the game ran on high settings and was able to maintain a constant 60fps, except when playing with three of my friends and when the shooting got crazy, then I saw drops in the 45fps, but these were few and far between. There is an annoying issue with loading a new map though, and that's stuttering. I don't know what the problem is caused by, probably texture loading, but the game gets basically unplayable for 5 to 10 seconds depending on the size of the zone you're loading. After that, everything is extremely smooth. The problem might be mitigated by running the game from an SSD, but friends on Windows told me they have the same issue. Apart from that, I had two game crashes during my 40 hours of game time, which always sucks, and friends on Windows reported that their game tended to crash at times as well. I also had a few bugs, notably a stuck quest which made it impossible to progress past a certain point, and forced me to wait for a friend to catch up, to complete the quest together and get unstuck. Other bugs are reported online, but I didn't experience them. All in all, Borderlands 3 is a smooth ride, apart from some teething problems. Online connection to your friends' games are crazy fast and everything purrs nicely. How does it run on Linux? Well, it works just fine, but there are a bunch of configurations to set up. You'll need to install the Epic Games Launcher for now, which is an easy one-click install with Lutris, and then install the Microsoft Media Foundation through various scripts, as well as add another DLL and register it through Wines RegEdit. It sounds scary, but it's honestly pretty easy, and can be done in about 10 minutes, and then never touched again. I have a dedicated article and video on how to set it up, check it out in the description below. Once you're all set up, there is nothing else to say really, the game ran smoothly and consistently, online co-op worked perfectly, and performance was good enough for me. I don't know how the performance is on Windows, so I can't compare it, but as it runs now, I don't need to know, it's good enough. How about the Epic Games Store? I would rather have played that game on Steam, with a nicer Proton integration, my existing friends list, and all the support for achievements, but it's not available there yet. I didn't want to wait, since my friends would have completed the game without me, so sure, it sucks to be forced into the Epic Game Store, and my appreciation for Epic has lowered drastically in the past year, but it's still a great game that I wanted to play. Is it worth my money? It depends on what you're looking for. If you like Borderlands in the past and feel the experience would still be fun, then yes, it's very much worth its asking price. If you like Borderlands before but feel like you've outgrown the genre and the humor, I'd say wait for a price drop to see if it still works for you. If you never liked Borderlands, there is nothing here to make you like this game, but I guess you wouldn't be watching this review anyways. And that's it for my Borderlands 3 review. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please consider liking, subscribing and turning on notifications. If you really did like this review, I have a Patreon page. I'll leave a link in the description below. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!